What's going on, awesome people? Welcome to an episode of Awesome People. It's uh, Monday, June 5th. I haven't had an Awesome People Instagram Live for a little bit, so let me kind of tell you what the Awesome People IG Lives are. So I started the Awesome People podcast a few years ago, uh, really just interviewing the most awesome Iranians that I know on the planet. So wanting to know more about their story, their challenges, um, and just all the great things that they've been doing to you know, do great at whatever field of work or industry or whatever it is that they were doing. And um, in the last few months, a lot of the focus has been on the revolution, obviously. So we have the Wednesday night countdown to freedom in Iran series. And um, now that we're doing the Azadi festival on July 3rd, we have some pretty amazing individuals that have graciously been donating their time, their effort, their talent uh, to be ambassadors of the Azadi festival. Uh, and these individuals are essentially meeting almost on a daily basis uh, via video calls. We're constantly chatting, ideating, brainstorming, and just coming up with uh, as many different ideas and connections of making the July 3rd Azadi Festival a smashing success for the community while also using that event as a, as a spotlight to the revolution. And so uh, these individuals are people that I obviously think they're awesome people for, um, for all that they're doing for our country. and for really just giving me the privilege to uh, work side by side with me and our team at Unite and Conquer to, to really put on an event that's not only gonna bring the DC community together, but it's gonna be live stream. So it'll be bringing people from all over the world that would like to join in virtually. So for more information and tickets to uh, the Azadi Festival, click the link in the bio. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm the first guest that I wanna have on in these IG Lives uh, is going to be Mo Namazi. He's the the founder of Retail Therapy Clinic. But just to give you a little background about him, he was born and raised in Vancouver. He has always been involved in the arts and has spent most of his professional career in the technology industry and most recently making video games. What a fun job that is! Always interested in Iranian culture and music. It wasn't until an unexpected three-year trip to Iran that he truly got to know his roots firsthand and fell in love with the country. So you can be damn sure I'm gonna be asking him why it was unexpected, because in his bio, he's actually saying uh, in quotes. Um, During those three years in Iran, Mo taught English and built lifelong friendships and a network of remarkably talented individuals. It was the experience of those three years that inspired Mo to found Retail Therapy Clinic. RTC was a way to give a voice to the voiceless while enabling philanthropic efforts back home in Iran and here locally. And I'm sure if you've been active in the revolution, uh, you've been probably following Retail Therapy Clinic. If not, be sure to do so. He's been dedicating so much of that platform to bring awareness to what's happening in Iran uh, in the past eight months. And so now, even though he's already got so much on his, on his plate while he's making video games and has a Retail Therapy Clinic, he's now also devoting his valuable time to uh, the Aussie Festival. So I'm very grateful for him joining us and he's coming on board. So. <sighs> Without any further ado, Mr. Namazi from Toronto, Canada. Hey, man. What's up, Mo? How are you, Aziz? Bad, brother. How you doing? Great to see you. You actually did fix your hair nicely. What's wrong, man? Everything. Usually you see me with a hat on. That's uh... <laughs> So, so you're making your, your grand debut on IG Live, apparently. Yeah. You know what? I'm not a much of a live person. I've done some podcasts that, uh, you know, I had the benefit of uh, lots of editing and touch-ups. But, uh, yeah, this is the first IG Live. So thank well, you. I, I appreciate having this honor to, to have this experience together. You know, first time for everything. Um, so I gave a little, a little brief bio, but it's always much better coming from the first person. Can you just share a little bit of background about yourself? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I've got... Um, you know, not, not a very adventurous story as to how I kind of came here to the diaspora. My, my parents ended up uh, moving to Canada actually a couple of years before the revolution. Um, my dad came to learn English and to start a business in, in Canada, um, knocked my mom up, and uh, I was born a little while after that. And uh, they basically once, uh, once, you know, the revolution happened and then the war broke out and I have three older sisters it just wasn't tenable to go back. And so uh, they stuck around um, and I was an infant, so I stayed with them. 
And uh, that was kind of the beginning. So born and raised in Vancouver um, and uh, was always super, super into Persian culture. But it, but it was that Persian culture that we grew up with here, like you don't, not really knowing what's going on in Iran. Yeah. Um, it was just the music and the art and you know all the stuff that we kind of got, got back here. Um, but uh, yeah, it wasn't really, uh, like you said, until I went to Iran that I really got to appreciate the culture for, you know, in the depth of what it is. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I'm curious, why unexpected in your bio? Like, is yeah. something you can share more about of like, why it was so unexpected? Because how old were you when this happened, first of all? Uh, I was about 23. Okay. Uh, okay, so I figured it was 20. So it's very rare not having gone and then go for three years. So whatever you can and want to share. Yeah. Go ahead. So, um, yeah, I always, I call it my Gilligan's Island story. Like it was supposed to be a two month tour. It was just for me to go to Iran and, and check. Um, and, uh, I ended up, uh, I, I ended up meeting a girl, right? Which is usually the, the, the start and the end of so many stories. Um, and then when I came back to Canada, we stayed in touch. Um, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to go back and visit. So I went back to Iran. Little did I know that if I go back twice in one year, um, then I become, a, I become a soldier. I have to go serve in the military. So I, I, I arrived at the airport and I'm told, are you leaving by the end of the week? And I'm like, no, why would I leave by the end of the week? And he goes, well, you're going to be, I go, you know what, I, I'll figure it out. This is Iran, I'll figure it out. And uh, I ended up staying. Um, it took about a year and a half to sort out the military thing, to not have to go. I'm absolutely not somebody that they would want serving in their military, I don't think. Uh, and, and during that time is when I decided, well, I, I need to do something something useful. So I started teaching at the university. That was amazing. Just And, and the cool thing, Iman, was I was there for, um, uh, uh, I was there for Ahmadinejad's first two years and Khatami's last year. So it was like, I got to see two faces of Iran during that time as well. And that transition between, uh, between those two was, was quite, uh, was quite drastic. So it was great. It was, you know, I, it's it's where um it's where i got married it's where i started businesses it's where i paid my first bribe it's where i went to my first rave at a at, in a military compound it was a lot of firsts i have to say wow you really you really stuck it to them huh you're like you know what i'm not going to join the military but i'll go part of a rave <laughs> all right very cool all right so um so but but something kind of like was created inside of you as a result of this three years that, that got you even more involved in, in the culture. And I guess that's what led to retail therapy clinics. So kind of tell us about that and then just elaborate a little bit more what exactly is RTC. Of course, yeah, absolutely. So um, really what it was is, you know, working with these university students. When I was at, uh, teaching at the university, it was uh, Tarbiyat Modaris University, which is basically master's students and PhD students. Um, all of them absolutely brilliant. Um, and it really started there. You know, th there were certain rules that we had to abide by. And for example, I wasn't allowed to close the, the classroom door which I always did. And it freaked out the students for the first couple of months. They were wondering, what's up with this guy? Like, what is he trying to get us to do by closing the door? And then they started to trust me. And then they opened up and um, just getting to know them and, and seeing that they have so much to offer, so much to give their own community and the world, but they're being stifled. Um, I, I'll never forget my birthday that first year in Iran where my students basically threw me a surprise party and threw me like a little concert almost, each of them performed. And it was just such an amazing, amazing experience. And, you know, it was just more, more of that. When I opened a, my own institute, it was the same thing, just meeting these incredible people. And then when it came to retail therapy clinic, um, it was a two pronged thing that I wanted to accomplish. The first was like, like he had said, I want to give a voice to the voiceless. And so we've got um, we've got members of the LGBT2 SIA community in Iran that have designed stuff for us that, you know, obviously they can't promote or sell back home. And so we, we do it through our shop, pay them a good living wage, and they also get to see their art on display. So that's incredible. Um, 
And then the other part of, you know, retail therapy clinic and why I decided to even go with that incredibly silly name and always, you know, people always ask me, what, what do you mean by that? It, you know, we all know about retail therapy, right? It's fun to buy things. It feels good. But I wanted to extend that throughout the whole chain, right? The whole supply chain. And so, you know, we start with employing people in at-risk communities and making sure that, you know, we're letting them to express materials that are non-toxic, um, you know, either organic or recycled uh, material, and also, um, you know, things like uh, biodegradable phone cases. You're done using your phone case, you're bored of it, throw it in the compost, it's dirt in, in six months. Um, so trying to make sure that we also maintain that, you know, the, the ethical and the sustainability of, of doing. And then and the tail end of all of this is making sure that partial proceeds, and in certain cases like the Zen Zendigalzidi line, all proceeds, but, and, and certain items, um, but partial proceeds are always going to a cause that's related to it as well. And so um, we're kind of giving back to local communities that way. We also do work back in Iran. So last year we paid for about 17 surgeries for um, pediatric patients. We were able to buy, uh, you know, equipment, medicine, supplies for the families that, uh, that needed it. Um, and right now our grassroots efforts in Iran are a little bit more low key, but uh, much more rewarding as well. But uh, yeah, we're still trying to be as involved as we can be in every way. And so and you guys started RTC what year? 2019 was it? Uh, no, it was 2020. 2020 started we launched officially grand opening near the end of the year there um so it's been it's been a couple uh, fast and furious years uh, um yeah the pandemic made everything fast and furious or i guess slow and furious but uh so how, how, how did you leverage rtc to bring more awareness to the revolution like obviously everything changed last september october um when did you decide or how did you decide to kind of um pivot and, and, and make the best use of RTC. It's, uh, it's funny, if you actually go through our, our story highlights, um, it, it was the night, they made the decision the night that I heard the news about Mass Army. It was, and I think the very first, uh, the very first post I put up um, just said, enough is enough. Um, and, uh, and that was it, and that kind of sparked it sparked that that need to uh, to kind of stand up for something, something that you know we were maybe a little bit too scared to stand up for before then, um, and it really was that sentiment of enough is enough. And so what I wanted to do was in those early days there wasn't a lot that we could do from here, and it was you know how do we how do we increase visibility? Um, so I, I found two organizations that uh, were around. They were they were kind of positioned well. One being the Center. Uh, for Human Rights in Iran, CHRI, who've been doing amazing work and, and, and working on uh, the MASA Act, and they're still lobbying for it and doing amazing work there, and also uh, awareness uh, on social media. And then PS752 Justice, who've, you know, who've been doing so much, you know, the, that huge rally in Berlin and, and really all the other great work that they're doing holding the Islamic Republic to account. So that was really, really important for us. Then we also started other little mini campaigns. So one of them being um, there, there still isn't to this day, and I don't believe there will be until uh, until this revolution is over, uh, a frame on Facebook where you can say, I stand with the people of Iran. Rightfully so. We've got them for a lot of other areas of conflict. Ukraine, I think that was up uh, within a couple of days. Iran, I was lobbying them for a while. They, uh, they didn't really want to do anything. And so... Um, what I ended up doing is saying, you know, we've got a lot of graphic artists that don't have a lot of work to do right now. Um, so send us your pictures, your profile photos, and we'll put a frame on it and send it back to you. So that, you know, we've, we've done about a thousand of those um, up until today from all over the world. Um, the most gratifying are the ones we get from Iran. Those are amazing when they actually come to us and go, hey, can you, you know, can you do this for ours? Um, and then sending that back home and then seeing it on their accounts is, is just an amazing feeling. Um, and then most recently, we're starting a new campaign for um, basically refugee, Iranian refugees that are outside of Iran right now that are at risk of being sent back. Um, what we're trying to do is match them up with sponsors uh, elsewhere in the world, immigration lawyers, basically to get them, um, basically to get them moved from where they are today. So the first case that we're working on is uh, is for. Uh, so, you know, she's, uh, 
she's right now at risk of being sent back to Iran, very vocal uh, during this revolution. Um, she's also, uh, you know, she's also at risk because of, um, because of who she is as well. Um, and uh, yeah, we're, we're trying everything we can. We've got four sponsors lined up, trying to get a lawyer to take on the case and we just need one more sponsor and we can, uh, we can go on to the next. So uh, it's, been, it's been gratifying and that's really over the last 48 hours. So it's been going really well. That's incredible, that's awesome. Um, what, what is the long-term vision for RTC? The long-term vision is really, you know, I'm trying to build a, build a little bit of legacy here um, is what I'm trying to do. So, you know, my day job is really, uh, it's just a lot of fun making video games for, for some big studios. And, and that's very gratifying personally, as far as, you know, uh, you know, just, just having work that you love to do. Um, but with RTC, I want to build something that, We'll continue to kind of give back. We'll continue to give back to the community. We'll focus on what it needs to to make sure that, um, you know, we're ethically supporting the causes that are important to us um, without any politics involved, without any sort of interference from anybody. Um, trying to keep it grassroots. But yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to just build a little bit of legacy, is really what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And like, and one, one of the ways that you're definitely, um, helping is your involvement with Azadi Festival. And so um, for those that are joining in just right now, Azadi Festival is happening July 3rd in Tysons, Virginia, just outside of DC. It's a 12 hour festival from 1 11 p.m. to 1 11 a.m. It's gonna be everything from uh, Iranian music, dancing, uh, musicians, uh, poetry, and of course, a lot of activists that have been working their asses off the last eight, nine months being the voice of Iranians, present company included right here. So my question to you, Mo, is um, given all that you have going on, family, your work full-time, RTC is obviously keeping you super busy. Um, to what do I owe the great pleasure that you were like, you know what, I wanna join the United Conquer team and be able to uh, have a part in um, Azadi to the point where you're coming from Montreal uh, down, to, I said Toronto earlier, but Montreal. Yeah. Montreal. yeah. Yeah, sorry, so from Montreal. And so um, tell me, like, what is it that kind of stood out for you? Honestly, brother, it's, it's your vision um, and, and what you're trying to do. So, you know, being, maybe I felt this more drastically than a lot of others because I was, I was, I was born in Canada. I literally inside, I felt like Johnny Canuck, but on the outside, you know, my, my full name, my parents in their infinite wisdom after naming my sister's very traditional Persian names, they named me Mohammed Reza, right? And and so everywhere I went, before I even opened my mouth, you know, there was there were assumptions made of me. Because of that, you end up turning your back on your community for a while. You end up, um, you know, almost being a caricature of your own community for a while. And what you're building with this is a pride in who we are. The unity aspect of it is by far the biggest draw for me. Like the fact that um, really together we can accomplish so much more than divided and and unfortunately as a community we've forgotten that over the last 44 years we've been divided so well um, by the Islamic Republic and, and their actions and their agents that we just can't work together anymore and so to actually do something like this where we're bringing people together and in reinstilling that pride man you, you had me at you had me at unity so uh, was really part of that I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to have your support. I was like, I was like very shocked when you said you're actually going to come down from Canada. I was like, I, I know that we're doing something right with somebody like you who's been so active and could be allocating his time to so many other different causes that, you know, you came here. So I can be very honest with you is the fact that like you were truly one of those people, you and Shaheen wanting to come from uh, LA, Shaheen Samadi and Ashley coming from LA. Uh, you know, you, you are the reasons why I believe that this has so much potential. So I appreciate you and, and the rest of the gang that's being a part of it. Uh, and you're also going to be having a presence by giving away some gift certificate, both for our live stream audience. And you're going to have a presence over there. You're going to have some some of your uh, shirts and merch, right? Yeah, absolutely. So so we um, we're definitely going to bring down some samples because one of the so one of the the model that we've that we've tried to do here, and I shared some stories today, and, and people can take a look. There are millions of tons of um, fast fashion, we like to call it, that are basically just dumped in in landfills. 
Um, there's like a giant island of clothing in, in the desert in Chile. And this is basically all from, from waste, right? Uh, and so what we do is everything we make, we make to order. Um, so one of, the, one of our most popular designs, the Pure Z Graphic Tee, we actually print the fabric, cut it, sew it to order. Um, and that makes sure that we never have any waste. Nothing is ever wasted. Everything's made, uh, made for a specific order. I will be bringing down some, some samples and, and some items that people can touch and feel and, and wear and, and pick up. Um, it, it, it's, uh, but yeah, yeah. The main, the main complaint we get is we want to be able to touch and feel the stuff. So it'll be great. You can come, really, you know, try some stuff on, see the quality. You know, we've got, like I said, shirts made from bamboo cloth. We've got recycled bottles and, and people don't really expect it to, to feel as nice as it does or to look as good as it does. But, um, yeah, hopefully seeing will be believing. We'll, uh, we'll see. Awesome. What's you, you, you're making it with uh, a lot of love and a lot of quality. That's that's definitely very clear. Um, when Iran is free, I, I no longer ask uh, if, it's when. When Iran is free, what do you look the most forward to? So <laughs> one of the things that I've been planning, um, which is incredibly superficial, but I've been planning this, is I, I want to go to Iran and get... Um, a couple revolutionary tattoos and you're done in Iran. I've been this close to going to get my Zanzini Gazavi tattoo here. Um, and I said, no, oh, I need to do this in Iran with an Iranian artist. I've even found her. Um, and again, I know exactly which shop I'm going to. And, uh, and so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, but more than that is the heartbreak that I get when I get people contacting me from Iran who want to purchase our stuff and they can't. Um, and on a few occasions I've said, just tell me what it is you like, give me your address, if it's a safe address and no one's gonna bother you about it um, later. And I just send them, send them things and it never seems to get there. It obviously gets intercepted. Um, so that'll be the other thing that I really want. Before this revolution started, you know, and up until September, we were actually negotiating to start production in Iran. I'm happy we didn't. Um, because you wouldn't have been able to take such a strong stance as we have now. Um, it would have caused problems for, you know, for everybody back home um, if they were affiliated with us. So, um, yeah, those are two things I'm definitely going to be doing. What's, do, you, do you know the tattoo? Is, or is it going to be Zan Zan Nikhil? Uh, you know what? I, I, haven't, I haven't narrowed it down yet. Um, I'm a little bit partial. So one of the things that I did uh, back in university, um, my major was classical studies, which has nothing to do with what I'm doing today. Um, but something that I ended up learning while I was there is how to translate and how to write in cuneiform. So, um, and so a lot of our products will also have translations um, into michi uh, that, that I've also checked with scholars that I know make sure that I'm doing it right. Um, and so we actually translated Zanzenigyozadi into Michi, literally in Cyrus the Great's language. And so that's probably what I'm going to go with. Um, it just has a lot more meaning for me that way, I think. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Beautiful, man. Well, um, listen, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to everything you're going to be doing at RTC. I'm looking forward to how we're going to collaborate, not just other the festival, but way beyond that. You know, I really just think that this is a stepping stone to a lot of bigger things, you know, and hopefully we'll do the Azadi Festival in Montreal and, and then we'll be in your backyard, you know, and we just keep on taking this on the road until we take it right and smack Tehran right by Azadi Tower, you know, and so that's that's our goal. And I, I appreciate you believing in the vision and, um, you know, utilizing your your Rolodex of, of people around you that, that trust and support you to extend them to, to me and that means a lot. So I appreciate you very much and how can uh, people support RTC more? Like, can you give the website? And obviously the Instagram is right here, but what's the best way to get in contact with you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, the website's just retailtherapyclinic.com. Um, our TikTok and Instagram account, retail.therapy.clinic. Um, but yeah, always uh, feel free to hit us up if you have any questions. Um, and yeah, go in there and, and rest assured that uh, basically any purchase that you make, um, from the Zanzini Gyozidi line, 100% of proceeds go to the CHRI and PS752. So spread awareness um, and uh, you're helping a good cause. Awesome, man. Well, it was great having you on this IG Live, Mo. Looking forward to probably talking to you uh, tomorrow and the day after and the day after. 
until July 3rd. So thanks for everything. Bohemide, Ozadi. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, that was Mo Namozi from uh, the beautiful city of Montreal. And um, the only thing I'll kind of end this uh, live with is get ready for a lot more lives in the next few weeks because we have a lot of ambassadors and they're growing each day. And even if I have to do three, four, five IG lives every single day, uh, I'm going to have it because every one of these individuals, they deserve to be recognized. And um, the same way that they're believing in what I'm doing and what United and Conquer is doing and what the purpose of Azadi Festival is, I believe in them and what they are doing individually uh, in their respective um, passions and their interests. You know, So I hope that you will join us for future episodes of uh, Awesome People Instagram Live this month because it will be all ambassadors of the Azadi Festival. And if you're interested in being one of the allies of the festival, if you want to be um, an ambassador where you actually get your hands and feet dirty and you get really involved and you can become a volunteer and you can help from anywhere in the world. We have, as you can see, Mo from uh, Montreal. We have Daria and Ashley and Shaheen from LA. We have Ravin from Netherlands. We have our crew from South Florida representing. The point is that wherever you are in the world, you have a, you have a place, you have a home here at Unite and Conquer. And that home is really right now just fully focused on freedom in Iran. Uh, freedom for our people. Um, you know, we're, every single day I just hear these stories of like how much, how much this, uh, this freaking regime has like crushed dreams and crushed relationships and um, so many hopes and dreams have been washed away and we now have an opportunity to um, make up for all that, all that damage, all that trauma. And the best way to do it is if we come together, the best way that we can do it in the short term is coming together for the Azadi Festival, and um, and let's see where it takes us. I can tell you that it won't be perfect, but I can tell you that some great relationships have already been made, some great lifelong friendships have been made, and we're going to do everything possible to present the best 12-hour Iranian experience from culture to Iranian vendors to the food to the music to the dance to the poetry to everything else that you can think of that... Um, our, our, our culture is best known for. So grateful for everybody that uh, has already helped and is continuing to help and grateful in advance to anybody that's gonna reach out and wants to also be a part of um, Azadi Festival and everything we're doing at United and Conquer. So message me if you're interested for more information and tickets to the Azadi Festival, please click LinkedIn bio, help share the word um, and let's have thousands of people in person in DC on July 3rd and watching via the live stream uh, around the world. Thank you so much. Bohemide Azadi.